Anaheim students, it's Miss Brunel, and today I'm going to be reading Fly Guy Presents Sharks by Ted Arnold, and I'm reading this with permission from Scholastic. And before I begin reading, I want to talk about one thing we know that good readers do. We know that good readers ask questions before, during, and after reading. These might be questions about something you don't understand. It might be a question about why something is happening. It might be a question about what will happen next. And sometimes as you read on, your questions will be answered. And then other times they're not answered. But it's always a good idea to ask questions while you're reading because it can help you better understand the text that you're reading. So as I'm reading Fly Guy Presents Sharks, I'm going to share some of my questions with you. A boy had a pet fly named Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name. Buzz. Buzz and Fly Guy were at the aquarium. Let's go see the sharks, said Buzz. Fly Guy seemed scared. Sharks are cool, said Buzz. There's nothing to be afraid of here at the aquarium. They dived in to find out more. Scientists have found about 400 different kinds of sharks. Each shark has amazing abilities. I wonder what some of those amazing abilities are. This is a gray reef shark, a blue shark, a leopard, a leopard shark, a spiny dogfish shark. This is a basking shark. This is a prehistoric shark. Sharks have been around for over 400 million years. That makes me wonder how scientists know that sharks have been around for that long. What evidence do they have that sharks have been around for 400 million years? And this is a prehistoric shark too. That makes me wonder how they know this is a, from prehistoric times and not from say 20 years ago. Sharks are fish. They live in bodies of water all over the world, even in lakes and rivers. Like other fish, sharks breathe through gills. Gills. A shark's skeleton is made of cartilage. Sharks don't have any bones. No bones. This is a hammerhead shark. And this is a great white shark. Cartilage makes sharks flexible. They can turn quickly to catch a bite to eat. Well, I think that might answer one of my questions before about what are the amazing abilities that sharks have. I just learned that they don't have bones, so they can quickly turn and be very flexible to catch the food they want to eat. And this is a coral cat shark. Sharks have many rows of teeth. Only the front row is used for eating. Huh. I wonder what the other rows of teeth are used for. Because as you can see, there are a lot of rows of teeth. This is the jaw of a nurse shark. The mouth of a shark can hold thousands of teeth at one time. Cookie cutter shark jaws. Jaws of a sand tiger shark. And that's a sand tiger shark. Most sharks are, carnivor are carnivores. They eat meat such as fish and seagulls. A shark uses its sharp teeth to rip its prey. Then the shark swallows the meat whole without even chewing. This is a white tip reef shark. I'm hungry, how about a tuna fish sandwich? Not all sharks eat meat. Well, that makes me wonder, well, if they don't eat meat, what do they eat in the ocean? This is a whale shark. The largest, or the whale shark is the largest shark in the world. It eats a small plant called plankton and other tiny plants. Oh, well, that just answered my question. They eat tiny plants in the ocean. I'm wondering if this shark is called a whale shark because it looks like a whale. And also, I know that whales are the largest animal. So I'm thinking that if this is the largest shark, maybe that's why it's called a whale shark. Plants. And here's a close.
close-up of plankton. This is a close-up of the whale shark teeth. Most sharks have rough skin made of denticles. This is a blue shark. It feels hard and sharp. Denticles protect sharks from harm. This is a blue shark's tiny denticles. A great white shark, rough and tough. A great white shark's denticles and a Greenland shark's denticles. I wonder what it would feel like to touch the denticles of a shark. This is a nurse shark. Nurse sharks have smoother skin than most sharks. It feels like sandpaper. Other fish have smooth, slippery scales. A shark's teeth can bite right through them. Sharks have super senses. That makes them great hunters. I wonder what senses the sharks use to hunt. Nose. Moses smooth hound shark. Ear. Big eye hound shark. A shark can hear its prey moving underwater. It can even hear a fish's muscles moving as it swims. This is the white tip reef shark. Well, right there, that answered my question about one of the senses that sharks use. They certainly use their sense of hearing. Lesser spotted dogfish, small spotted catfish. A shark has special eyesight that helps it to navigate through dark, murky waters. But a shark can feel its prey nearby without even seeing it. People need special glasses to see in the, shark, in the dark. So again, this is answering my question that sharks can use their sense of sight, and I suppose also their sense of touch if they can feel prey nearby without seeing it. That makes me wonder how close the prey has to be in order for the shark to know that it's close or nearby. Here's a great white shark. Sharks are very smart. They have brains just like humans and flies. I think fly guys are making a joke right now. They have super sensitive noses to sniff out their next meal. Two thirds of a shark's brain is used for smelling. A great white shark can smell blood from three miles away. Many baby sharks, which are called pups, hatch from eggs. A mother shark can have up to 100 pups at a time. A swell shark embryo within the egg. And this is a newborn swell shark coming out of its egg case. A newborn pup shark resting. Puppies! Most sharks live to be about 25 years old. That's way longer than the life of a fly. And here a newborn lemon shark pup is swimming away from its mother. I wonder how long pups stay with their mothers and then at what age or at what point do they swim away? Or do they always stay with their mothers? Sharks do not sleep. Most have to keep moving in order to breathe. This is a white tip reef shark. Sharks are super fast swimmers. They can move up to 25 miles per hour, but they cannot swim back. This is a goblin shark. Some sharks are nocturnal hunters. They are more active at night. In the dark, a cookie cutter shark uses a special light called luminescence. Luminescence is a new word to me, so I wonder what that means. I know it said special light, but I'd like to know more. This light makes a shark look smaller so that its prey is not scared away. The shark surprises its prey and takes a cookie-sized bite. And here's a cookie-cutter shark. This photograph helps me a lot because I can see it's really bright here, but the rest of the shark is sort of in the dark. So that's a really good um, way for the shark to sneak up on its prey. This one glows in the dark. Wow, said Buzz. We learned a lot about sharks today. They are so cool.
Fly Guy was not scared anymore. Fly Guy, said Buzz, I can't wait for our next field trip. And that's the end of Fly Guy Presents Sharks. So as you see, some of my questions I was able to answer as I was reading, but not all of them. But it definitely helped me to understand the book a little bit better. So when you're reading this week, why don't you try the same thing? As you're reading, whether you're reading fiction, nonfiction, any type of genre, ask questions while you're reading. Okay, see you next time.